Someone said Jim Voss couldn't decide whether to work for the cops or the crooks, so he ended up working for both. His father was a preacher and his parents hoped that Jim Voss would follow in his father's footsteps. They were to be sorely disappointed. He did enroll in Bible school, but one day he disappeared together with part of the school funds. He later served one year in jail for armed robbery and during his military service he was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment for stealing government property. There seemed to be a pattern developing in his life and he said himself that he was determined to grab everything that came in his way. He was, however, an electronics expert. He'd always had an interest in radios and electronic equipment. And when he left the military, he set up his own business in Los Angeles. Quite by accident, his expertise in electronics came to the notice of the Los Angeles Police Department. And they found his abilities to bug rooms and to intercept telephone conversations invaluable in fighting crime. He came to the notice of a man who was described as the godfather of Los Angeles, Mickey Cohen. He was the head of an organization of syndicated crime and he wanted to use the skills that Jim Voss had in order to further his criminal career. And so for a while Jim Voss was working both for the LAPD and also for their chief enemy, Mickey Cohen. He developed a system of wiretapping, which meant he could intercept the direct teletype wire between the horse racing meeting and the betting shop. This meant that he could delay the message coming from the horse race with the results. He could delay that for one or two minutes and he could use that time to signal to an associate who would go into the betting shop and quickly place a bet on the winning horse. It made them thousands. One Saturday, as he was returning from a meeting with his criminal associates, he turned on the radio in his car and it was tuned to Stuart Hamblin's radio show. Stuart Hamblin was a well-known country western star and just as he was driving along, Stuart Hamblin was telling how that just this past week he had become a believer in the Lord Jesus. He got along to a tent campaign that was being held in Los Angeles by a young evangelist called Billy Graham. He had trusted the Lord Jesus, his life was changed, and he was announcing it on air. Well, this made quite an impression on Jim Vass, because he knew the type of man that Stuart Hamblin had been up to this point. And it was on the next day that Jim Vass and his wife had gone out for a drive around Los Angeles. They went to a bar and it was closed. They went to Mickey Cohen's house, he was out. So they were drifting around aimlessly driving, and they found themselves going along the road where the gospel tent was. He said to his wife, do you fancy going in hearing this man? So they decided just to go in out of curiosity. They sat down. Well, Jim Voss looked around him, listened to the singing, and then Billy Graham stepped forward to preach. Well, he'd never heard Billy Graham before, but he was impressed by this direct preacher. Jim Voss knew the story about Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead, but he never felt it presented so powerfully before. He said later on that he was convinced at that point that he was a sinner and all that he'd done in the past and his dishonesty and his lifestyle was all coming back to him, all the guilt of what he had done as he listened to Billy Graham and he began to feel uncomfortable and he thought to himself, I really need to get right with God but he thought, I'm not going to do it tonight and just as he was thinking that, Billy Graham said, there's a man here tonight who's hardening his heart. This may be the last chance God gives him. He went on to say, you can't decide for Christ just whenever you want to. He decided, I have to settle this and I have to do it now. And he went to the front and he knelt down. He said that somebody knelt down beside him and began to pray. He didn't know who it was. He didn't even hear what they said. He was talking, as he said, to God. He got down on his knees. He confessed his sins. He trusted the Lord Jesus to save him. He believed that on the cross, Jesus had paid the price for his sins and he rose to his feet not feeling anything supernatural had happened, but feeling that something had been settled, that there had been a change. And his profession of faith in Christ was tested very quickly. He had just agreed to go to St. Louis. There was a big race meeting taking place there and they needed Jim Voss and his equipment. Jim Voss realized he could no longer do that. He realized that this could be signing his death warrant. Well, they did come round to see him. But despite being armed and ready and willing to kill him, they were restrained. The second great test was 
that during his years of crime he had defrauded hundreds of people. So the first thing he had to do was to make restitution. He sold his car, sold his furniture, sold eventually his house, paid back the people that he defrauded over the years. His life had completely changed. A few months later, someone contacted him and said, I know that you have a recording that was made secretly between two politicians. I am willing to pay you $10,000 for the copy of that conversation. Jim Voss said to him, you haven't heard the news. He said, what news? He said, Jim Voss is dead. The man looked at him as though he was crazy. And Jim Voss said, the old Jim Voss is dead. And he quoted a verse from the Bible. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things are passed away and all things are become new. His life was changed. He eventually died in 1997, but for the rest of his life, he lived to spread the good news of salvation and to tell others about the transforming power of the Lord Jesus Christ. If like Jim Voss, we're willing to confess our sin and to trust in the Lord Jesus who died to save us, then we too can be made new, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching.